Hey YouTube and everybody else. Let's talk. Let's talk about Brian Fisher from the American Family Associ Association. And let's talk about Scott Lively from DefendTheFamily.org or .com. I don't know which one it is. It's .org or .com. All relevant links of what I'm going to be talking about is going to be down down below. Now, <clears throat> on July 6th of 2012, this year, which would be about a week and a half ago, Brian Fisher, on his radio show, uh, had Scott Lively on um, to talk about some things. Let's check out his video. Um, the video that I'm going to be going through uh, will be linked down down below. It is from the American Association's YouTube channel. But let's go through this little interview, shall we? Uh, here I am. Been doing this program now for three years as of today, and I'm very happy that all of you are part of this conversation in our listening audience. And yes, you have been doing this for three years, but for about the past two years, the family, the American Family Associ Association, has been labeled as a hate group. The reason why the American Family Asso Association is labeled as a hate group is going to be shown in this particular video, even though that the majority of people that are going to be watching this video already know why, I need to get some shit off my chest. Fellow crew members of the USS Focal Point, remember, USS Focal Point is our patrol boat, it's not a pleasure cruise, we are patrolling the choppy waters of America's public life looking for the intersection of truth and politics, our commander is on the bridge. <laughs> truth? Truth. The truth coming out of Brian Fisher. That happens accidentally with you and with Scott Lively because you guys have been presented to with so much actual real data that you truth. <laughs> okay. The scriptures serve as our nautical charts. The Holy Spirit is a navigator and I am your loyal, humble, and cheerful first mate. Now one of the issues we've talked about here on Focal point. This is a uh, a, a point that I, I repeat. I'm going to say this until the day I die, because I don't think this issue is going to be resolved before that day comes. <clears throat> you know what is that? You're actually kind of right. You're kind of right that 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 this battle that you're about to talk about and that I'm about to rant on, on you about, you will probably die before it's over. Hell, I might die before it's over. Why? Because of bigoted, homophobic assholes like you that want to dump their religious ideology into our government and into laws. If people like you would allow equality to actually happen, it will not harm society at all, and the battle will be over. Nobody is stopping you from believing what you want to believe, but you want to push it onto others. But let's get into this, shall we? We must choose in America, we must choose between homosexuality and freedom. Because we cannot as a country, we cannot as a nation, we cannot as a people, we cannot as a society, as a culture, we cannot have both. We have to choose. It is either homosexuality or liberty, whether it's liberty of religion, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, all those rights uh, are in jeopardy as the homosexual agenda advances. Every advance of the homosexual agenda comes at the expense of liberty. Anywhere the homosexual agenda makes progress, liberty is in retreat. Liberty has to retreat in the face of the homosexual agenda, and that's one of the reasons why we have got to stop it in the name of of religion and the name of religious liberty and the relay, uh, name of liberty of all kinds. <coughs> and this is exactly why the American Family Association and you are labeled as hate groups. Because you diatribe into empty rhetoric that you back it up with absolutely nothing. You say that homosexuals like me intrude and destroy liberties. 
that allowing marriage equality will destroy um, nations, that it will impede on religious freedom. And you nearly tripped up at the end there. You nearly tr tripped up and tried to say that allowing marriage equality will affect Christians. Just Christians. How? You never give any fucking examples on what this gay agenda actually is. You never cite sources of the nine states in the United States that allow marriage equality and the other countries around the world that allow marriage equality, how it has affected societies, how it has impeached or encroached on, on other people's liberties. You have not given any examples, and there are no examples of churches being forced to go against their own religious beliefs by, by marrying people of the same sex. This shit does not go on. And people like you, and you are about to have Scott Lively on your show, both of you push, push this thing of the gay agenda that we're trying to destroy things. And people like you wonder why there are pissed off gays like me out there. It's because you are a fucking liar. You are... You are a hate monger. You you hold yourself up there in this high moral standards. But I could I could go to any one of your shows and pull out lie after lie, no citations. I could show you peer reviewed articles that totally fucking contradict everything that you say and it has been presented to you on multiple occasions and you still fear monger to push your own religious ideology to push inequality for other people but let's go on with your interview of Scott Lively shall we because I've ranted enough now and here with us to illustrate some of the problems that we are dealing with as a culture is Dr. Scott uh, Lively of Scott Lively Ministries. Now, who is Scott Lively? <clears throat> Scott Lively. Oh, where to fucking start with you? I'm going to read a little bit from, from the Wikipedia article here. Scott Douglas Lively is an American author, attorney, and activist noted for its oppo opposition to LGBT rights and his involvement in the ex-gay movement. Yeah, this guy uh, is a lying, hate-filled uh, marauder. I... I'm trying not to lose it in this video. I'm trying not to do the, the usual dar ranting angriness. Um, Scott Lively used to work for an organization called The Family. Um, he was one of the people sent over to Uganda back in 2008 and 2009 um, to spread uh, hatred for the gay community. For those of you that do know or do not know, uh, back in 2009-2010, Uganda had, had a kill the gays bill uh, going through, through their par parliament that Scott Lively and his ilk at the family helped craft and helped promote and gave speeches to spread around homophobia, uh, that particular bill was killed. Its actual name is not called Kill the Gays Bill. That's what people know it as. Um, the bill in Uganda would have made it illegal to be homosexual and the penalty could have been death or decades in prison. And those that, that, that harbored um, homosexuals would have also have suffered consequences. Now, like I said, the video that I'm going through 
was ta- uh, was done on July the 6th, so a week and a half ago from my perspective. Um, they are going to talk about Scott Lively um, going to uh, going to Minnesota in a week from their time, which for me was four days ago. Uh, so four days ago, Scott Lively was at a meeting um, in Minnesota, in Springfield, Minnesota, uh, because they have they have an anti discrimination law going through their legislator um, and Scott is trying to fight against it now I'm going to show a picture of Scott Lively at this play um, at this particular meeting and I would like people to take a moment and to read the sign that is right beside him Okay, that sign says, Human Rights Commission is a Trojan horse for the gay agenda. This guy has been, has spent basically his career fighting against equality and using fear-mongering tactics like this of saying that the gay agenda is trying to uh, impede and destroy societies and to convert children and all of that. Uh, Let's continue with their interview, shall we? Because I'm kind of ranting here. Uh, Scott, welcome back to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. So good to be here with you, Brian. And it's especially an honor, Scott, to have you with us on our third anniversary broadcast. Uh, you are, are with Defend the Family. Go to defendthefamily.com for more information about Scott uh, and his ministry. And, Scott, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is to, to look at the ways in which you sent an email out today. I'm on your distribution list talking about something that's going on in Springfield, Missouri. Now, you would think that if any place on earth would be safe from the encroachment of the homosexual agenda. What homosexual agenda? What the fuck is the homosexual agenda? Seriously, can you people actually point to this fucking agenda that us gays have? It would be a sleepy community like Springfield, Missouri. Now, tell us what's going on in Springfield, Missouri. You're going to be heading out there. Tell us what's going on there and why this ought to be a concern to all freedom-loving Americans. Well, Brian, uh, Springfield, uh, Missouri, is uh, the city council has announced that they're going to begin, quote-unquote, considering uh, an anti-discrimination policy based on sexual orientation, which I call a gay fascism bill. A gay fat fatishum bill. What the fuck? This guy is like off his fucking rocker. Okay. Um, like I said, this interview took place a week before he he went and spoke. Um, so I'm gonna actually read some of some of the things he actually said at this speech speech that he gave and this link is down below at newsletter at, at news-letter.com uh, I think I'll make it the first one the first or second or third link actually how to add this set up it's actually going to be the third link the first two links down below is for right wing watch uh, right Wing Watch is a great website and YouTube channel which exposes people like this, and that's how I that's how I know about Scott Lively. But um, it will be labeled Scott Lively at 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 the Liberty Station. But uh, the first excerpt of what he says is a uh, third paragraph. 
Don't let this anti-discrimination ordinance go through, said Lively during his fr Friday night pr presentation at the Liberty Station on, on, on North Kansas Expressway. It's like chicken pox. It's in your system forever. You've got to kill this thing before, before it goes in. He compares equality, social equality, and not discriminating against people for their sexual orientation or their gender identity like chicken pox. Uh, later on, he says, since, since when is sodomy a civil right? said live, live, Lively, who lives in Springfield, Massachusetts. It's a ridiculous, preposterous notion. There's absolutely no correlation between sodomy and skin color. This is after he talks about uh, the gay rights movement uh, kind of building on what the civil rights movement did and he thinks that there is no correlation between the two which I don't get how how he does not get discriminating against somebody because of their sexual orientation is very similar to discriminating against somebody because of the color of their skin well I kind of get it because in his mind he him and Scott Fisher or Brian Fisher and people of the American Family Association and uh, Exodus International and the Council Research Center they view sexuality as a choice like they believe that everybody is born heterosexual and that people choose to be gay or are converted into the gay lifestyle but let's continue with this shall we uh, because every place that these things go in, uh, the, uh, it, it's, it's like the, these things are like the seed that contain the entire homosexual agenda with all the poisonous fruit. These bills are full of poisonous fruit. Poisonous fruit. Don't you just love the wording that people like Scott Lively and Brian Fisher use. You know, an anti-discrimination bill. It's poisonous fruit! Let's see where he goes with this, shall we? Gay marriage, gay adoption, uh, you know, transgender bathrooms, the taxpayer funding of, of uh, every kind of gay project you can think of. It all starts with an anti-discrimination policy based on sexual orientation. So, Scott Lively is saying that anti-discrimination bills leads to equality for people and society. And that is supposed to be the gay agenda? I could get behind that. I could get behind equality for everybody in a society with no discrimination going on if they're men, women, skin color, religious affiliation, sexual orientation, sexual I or gender identity. Almost screwed screwed that one up. Gender identity I am for that. Scott Lively and Brian Fisher and your elk are not for that. You guys plainly say that you are not for equality in America. In fact, you guys want a theocracy in America. You guys push this thing that America is a Christian nation when you damn well know that it's not. You guys are fully aware of 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 America being a secular society or a secular government or that we're supposed to be. But no, like you guys think that since since your religion is not having its say on everybody else, then you are the ones being discriminated against. But let's go on. 
And uh, we've been watching this happen all across the country from since the 1980s. San Francisco and Madison, Wisconsin, you know, places like that went down first, and then they swept across liberal America. And now, uh, in large part because Obama's in the White House and is a champion of their, of their uh, agenda, they now are emboldened, and they're pushing into the conservative states and into conservative cities, and they're starting to fall. Uh, Oklahoma City last year adopted an anti-discrimination uh, policy in uh, in their city, and uh, and now it's Springfield, Missouri. You know, and, and, I and Hutchinson, Kansas, that, Hutchinson, Kansas. I mean, it's a sleepy little farm community. They adopted an ordinance very similar to that. It's a tremendous threat to religious liberty. I gotta say that at times I kind of love the 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 fucking rhetoric that people like. Brian Fisher and Scott Lively use that allowing marriage equality is an affront to religious freedom. You know, like our freedoms to practice our religions will be impeded if gays are allowed to marry. How? How? How the fuck does that happen? Actually, in a little bit, bet you're going to ask Scott, Scott to give you some examples, and I'll go over those. But... I just wanted to point out that that this empty rhetoric that's been going on for about 50 fucking years is just bullshit. And so, Scott, maybe elaborate on this a little bit, because you give some examples, and I don't know if you've got your, your note in front of you or can remember what you wrote, but you gave several examples of how this gay fascism uh, winds up being oppressive to Christians and those who believe in religious liberty, because people hear that, hey, who's who, who's for discrimination? We all we all ought to be against discrimination, but what people do not realize, because they're thinking about this very superficially, they are not looking at the the law of unintended, well, in this case, intended consequences, kind of what right. follows from an anti-discrimination ordinance, and, and illustrate for us how these anti-discrimination policies that sound so good on the surface wind up being lethal and and hostile to Christian faith. Well, think about this, Brian, and, and, and your listeners, think about this. Just as you said, I'm 100% with you that this is a, uh, this is a war that, that we're facing in our country, and the contest is between homosexuality and freedom. It's really it's between homosexuality and uh, Judeo-Christian fundamental values because these two things are in direct contradiction to each other. And if you're going to es establish that you can't discriminate against homosexuality, you're, you are stating that you're going to discriminate against Christianity. If you just say you're going to, if you're going to discriminate against, uh, against uh, Christianity, then you're going to be discriminating in favor of homosexuality. That's how this works. And so... And, and, and to uh, me, when, Scott, that, that seems to me that the essence for us to get to, the discrimination itself, I wrote a column on this some time ago, and I don't, I don't think everybody agrees with me, but my point is, Discrimination is not a bad thing. That's what all public policy oh, is all about. We discriminate against certain behaviors that we think represent some kind of a danger to social order or to human health or whatever. We discriminate against those behaviors. And, you know, in my view, homosexual behavior is one of the behaviors we ought to discriminate against. We, ought, we shouldn't promote it. We shouldn't advance it. We shouldn't uh, provide special subsidies for it and all that kind of thing because of the risks to human health. That's a legitimate public policy issue. I had no idea where to fucking stop in that dive drive that both of you had going on. I'm sitting here, like, clicking and stopping and going, okay, let me not cut here. Let me see what the fuck else they're going to say. Ooh, where to fucking start? Somehow allowing two people of the same gender to get married and having laws saying that you cannot discriminate against people because of their sexual orientation somehow impedes somehow discriminates against religious individuals what the fuck how 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 the fuck does that work where did you draw this fucking line saying that we're going to pass a law saying that businesses and the government cannot discriminate against 
people of the LGBTQ community. How do you equate that to saying that it's discriminatory against religion? And let me be fair here because you guys are only promoting Christianity. You're not promoting any of the other religions. How the fuck is Christianity affected by the government not discriminating against people based on sexual orientation? How? Brian Fisher. That ending part of you saying that discrimination is good because because we discriminate against things that harm society and you've tried this before and you've had your ass handed to you on this there is no empirical evidence showing that homosexuality is dangerous to society or is a fucking health risk to those involved you are well aware of this the studies that you cite you are well aware of have been debunked over and fucking over again one of Brian Fisher's things that he does is that he tries to to equate homosexuality with murder, theft, rape. You know, how these three things are harmful to society, so we discriminate against people that do that. You are absolutely right, Brian Fisher. We as a society have sat down and said... To have a cohesive society, what rules should everybody follow? Don't kill, don't steal, don't fucking rape. The only problem is, is that with your religion, rape isn't in there. You know, rape is not fucking in there. Your holy book actually says to kill rape victims of rapists in certain situations. In other situations, it tells you to only kill the rapist. In another situation, it tells you to force the rape victim to rape, or to marry the rapist. But I'm going off in my rants, and this is a really long video, and I'm sorry, everybody. But I think what you're saying, Scott, is we got to understand that if we are not prepared to discriminate against homosexual behavior, we are going to wind up discriminating against people of Christian faith. There's no other alternative. False dichotomies for the win. That's right. You're good. You have to choose. All discrimination is is, is, a, is making a choice. You're choosing between two things. And when you're choosing between two things that are contradictory, you either have one, you either have, as a society, a a respect for the, for the Judeo-Christian sexual ethic, which is monogamous, heterosexual, lifelong marriage. That's, that's what the Bible gave us. We would follow your Bible if this country was actually founded on Christianity, which it is not, and both of you fucking know it. Both of you are well aware of the secularism of our government. Both of you are well aware of the writings of the Founding Fathers. Both of you are well aware of the Treaty of Tripoli that states in no way is, is, is the American government founded on the Christian religion. And also, if this was your damn Bible that you want to go by, we can go to, like, I don't know, Numbers 31 where Moses orders the killing of all the males and all of the non-virgin females of a certain city and tells the people to keep the virgin teens and preteen girls as sex slaves. We can go into Deuteronomy and talk about how rape victims are supposed to marry their rapist. We can go into all of the supposed prominent figures of the Bible and show you how the vast greater majority of them were plemigamist. But no, no, you two totally ignore those points whenever somebody brings them up. Uh, or you, you believe in sexual freedom. And the two things are not compatible. They call it sexual freedom. It's actually sexual anarchy. Uh, and, and if you don't, 
you have to choose between one or the other. Now, you, Scott, can't, you, can't, you can't embrace both of them at the same time. Now, let me, let me ask you to give us a couple of examples. I'll just pick a couple out of your letter from today, but tell us what happened in Vermont with the Wildflower Inn just last year. Yes, well, this is, a, this is the example. Now, the reason these, these are in this uh, statement that I put out is that whenever one of these anti-discrimination policies go into effect, the very next step is gay activists go out and to find people to sue because that's what they get. That's what this law is about. It empowers them to be able to attack people who disagree with them uh, with, with civil rights lawsuits. And this, this, uh, this inn in Vermont uh, has been in business for, for a long time, and, uh, and then these two lesbians came and demanded that uh, that this uh, I, I think it's a Christian institution. I'm not sure, but demanded that they be able to have a lesbian wedding at this facility. And this isn't some gigantic hotel or or chain or whatever. This is a this is a bed and breakfast. And the the owner said no. And of course, the lawsuit comes. And how do they have the, the legal standing? Because there's an anti discrimination policy in place. Okay, let's take a moment and stop and actually talk about this. Okay, because I just looked it up. <clears throat> Link down below is the website for the Wildflower Inn in Vermont and an ABC News article about this lawsuit, okay? This particular inn is a privately owned business, okay? Privately owned businesses still have to adhere to the law. They didn't demand it. They walked, uh, they sent an email, they asked, uh, they wanted a reception there and possibly to have their wedding there. The, the O'Reilly's, Mary and Jim O'Reilly, um, sent an email back and it says here, um, they were told via email that innkeepers, Mary and Jim O'Reilly, do not host gay receptions because of their personal feelings okay it doesn't matter what your personal feelings are you don't have the right to discriminate against somebody on their gender their race their sexual identity none of that that's what this law that's what these laws are about to stop discrimination <coughs> um a little further on, it says, according to Dan Burnett, an attorney with the Vermont chapter of the ACLU that puts, that puts the O'Reilly's in violation of the law, we believe, we believe that this is a straightforward violation. Shen, businesses open to the general public must serve all customers. They cannot turn... Term, term people away based on sexual orientation. Uh, the section uh, that that section of the law has been on the books in Vermont since 1992. So, um, Scott, they violated the law by discriminating. That's what we are fighting for: is just fucking equality, which. You people put up this false dichotomy of uh, equal rights for homosexuals means that Christianity will be harmed and not showing how. They are not a, they are not a religious institution. Like churches cannot be forced to host gay weddings. <clears throat> Can you get this through your fucking skull? And every single one of these examples that I gave, you got Lexington, Kentucky, uh, the uh, uh, hands-on originals, the T-shirt company, just fined sixty-six hundred dollars for refusing to print T-shirts for the the local homosexual festival. And this is a company that on it, that's prominent on his on its website. It it says it's a Christian company, and it even has a, a stated policy saying that it reserves the right to refuse business in contradiction to its values. That's what these activists do. They, they look for people that have that kind of website because the whole point of this, this lawsuit is to create the ability 
to take down the opposition. You know, and Scott, this is I was. This isn't just the U.S., it's all around the world. Yeah, let me interject this here. I was talking to a lawmaker in another state who was asking me about an anti discrimination ordinance there in the state because every year the gay lobby comes to the legislature of that state and we want to add gender identity to our discrimination policy for, for, for this state. And they're tired of fighting it. So he called me and said, look, is there some way that we can accommodate this so we can get this behind us and not have to face this year after year after year? And I said, no. They're, they're, no they're it, you know, you have to draw the line. And I explained to him what you're talking about, Scott. If, if once a policy like that were to go into place, then every single values-driven business owner in the entire state would be subject to a business-ending lawsuit any time he would make sexual values or sexual standards a part of his personnel policy uh, of any kind, right. and they would look for people to drag into court. Then how about this? Why didn't you tell that lawmaker, then don't discriminate against people based on their, sexual, their sexuality or their gender identity? Huh? I mean, is this such a hard concept for people to get through their heads? Just don't fucking discriminate. You know, the reason why this battle is still going on is because of people like you, Scott Lively, and people like you, Brian fucking Fisher. That's why these battles are still going on. We should be over this. It's the 21st fucking century. But no, you think that because you don't get to implement laws based on your religion that somehow we're discriminating against your religion. God, you guys are really fucked up. And Scott, exactly I want right. to finish by talking about your situation just for a moment. We've had you on before to talk about this. I just want to give us an update. You went to Uganda. You uh -huh. spoke there. You defended and explained a biblical view of homosexuality. You did not advocate that homosexuals be executed for uh, homosexual behavior. In fact, you uh, advocated just the opposite. We want to get these people help. But nevertheless, you were charged in a court in the United States for crimes against humanity, Scott. <laughs> crimes against humanity for doing so nothing outrageous. more. Yeah, I for doing nothing more than... It. Yeah, for doing nothing more than teaching what the Bible teaches about homosexuality. And uh, you've got the Liberty Councils come to your side. Tell us what the latest development is in that court case. Yes, Scott Lively is being sued by a Uganda gay rights group. Uh, reading from a New York Times article, a Uganda gay rights group filed suit, suit against an American evangelist, Scott Lively, in federal court in Massachusetts on Wednesday, accusing him of violating international law by inciting the persecution of gay men and lesbians in Uganda. Um, yeah, that's exactly what Scott Lively has done. He went to Uganda and preached against gay people in a very fervent way, and his group uh, the house or whatever the fuck it's called, the family, um, um, helped craft the legislation that the Uganda Parliament was trying to pass, pass, which its adoptive name was called the Kill the Gays Bill. All right, um, Scott, Scott and Brian here are saying that they don't advocate gay, gay the killing of gay people, they just advocate the persecution and discrimination against gay people. What the fuck is the goddamn difference between the two? What do you think persecution and discrimination leads to, Scott and Brian? Huh? Just wondering if that ever rolled around in your fucking skulls. Alright, Dar's lost it. Dar's gonna be one Dar rant for the rest of the video. But link down below will be the New York Times article that I just read from. It's an interesting read. I took some time and just skimmed through it. And linked below that one will be the court, um, the actual court document that was uh, filed. If you want to read through that, I glanced through it. Those things kind of bore me because of the, the way that they're written, but both of them are down there for everybody. Yeah, I'm being I'm being sued in my own federal court system 
by a homosexual group in Uganda uh, being charged. It's, it's a civil suit. It's not a criminal charge, but being, being, uh, being sued for crimes against humanity uh, for preaching against homosexuality in Uganda. Uh, it, it's this, everything that I did was speech. It's, it's legal here in the U.S. It's legal in Uganda. But these guys are using the alien tort, tort statute are bringing a European uh, norm and trying to impose that on me in my own federal court system. Liberty Council's come forward, 109 page motion to dismiss. It was powerful. I, I don't think this case can last uh, much longer. Well, that's an amazing uh, we'll thing, see. Scott, because that's an amazing thing, because you didn't break any laws in Uganda. And you that's certainly right. didn't break any laws in the United States. It's just a bizarre that's thing right. to me. Let's hope that thing gets thrown out. And, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to help Scott, he's going to go to Springfield, Missouri. You can go to defendthefamily.com. Get more information. Donate if you'd like to help with the cost of his trip to Springfield to help to protect liberty and values down there. Defendthefamily.com. Scott Lively, thanks again for being with us, my friend, and thanks for standing in the gap. Thanks, Brian. God bless you. Back in two. Yeah, it's over, and this is the last section of me. Now, I am for free speech. I am for people putting out whatever to say pretty much whatever they want as long as they are not inciting violence or discrimination. Well, that whole inciting discrimination thing is a very touchy thing and it I'm not going to go into it here, but what he did by going to another country and being part of certain groups that were inciting discrimination the 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 head of the gay rights movement in Uganda was killed over this shit sorry getting angry again but i i think that Brian Fisher and Scott Lee, lovely ha, lively whatever has the right to say whatever they want. They also have the right to be criticized by anybody and everybody else. And they have the right to be called out on their bullshit. These two people want to interject their own religious point of view into our government. And none of them have ever been able to show, and no anti-gay group either, has ever been able to show what harm... Um, not discriminating against people based on sexual orientation and what harm marriage equality does to society as a whole. There's no evidence showing that this happens at all. And I will continue to fight for this. I apologize for this 43 minute, 44 minute video. I don't know what it's going to come out to when this is done. But thank you for sitting through this. All relevant links are down below. And have a good one.